here to talk you through the preparation and performance of a postal breath test kit. This kit is for the detection of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO. This test measures the levels of hydrogen and methane in your breath, gases which are produced by intestinal bacteria. By measuring these gases over different time points, it gives us a really good indication of whereabouts in your gastrointestinal system these bacteria are, and if there is an overgrowth. To test for SIBO, we can use either a glucose or a lactulose test kit. Both glucose and lactulose are sugars that are fermented by intestinal bacteria to produce these gases hydrogen and methane. After performing a SIBO test kit, we might want to try one of our other test kits, which tests for intolerance to certain sugars, lactose, dairy sugar, or fructose, the sugar found in fruit. The instructions for these tests are slightly different and the instructional video for these can be found on our website. Once you've ordered your postal breath test kit, it should arrive in the post. If you open up the kit, you'll find 10 sealed test tubes with green screw top lids. Ten collection tube labels, one for each tube. One symptom sheet. A instructional leaflet. Your sugar substrate package, which will be either glucose or lactulose. And a straw in a sealed paper container. You will also have two bubble wrap pouches for, to put your completed tubes in and a postage envelope to post your completed kit back to us. Before you begin your postal breath test, make sure to read the enclosed instructional booklet carefully. This booklet includes details of preparation you need to follow before your test. By following this preparation exactly, you can ensure that your results will be most accurate. For four weeks prior to your test, you should not take any antibiotics. For one week prior to your test, you should not take any laxatives or promotility agents, but you may continue with any other essential medication. For the 24 hours before your test, specific preparation must be followed. This period includes a 12 hour specific diet, followed by a 12 hour fast. The diet is the white food or low fermentable diet, which ensures that when you begin your breath test, your baseline levels of hydrogen and methane will be low. The diet includes plain white bread, plain white rice, baked or grilled meat such as chicken or pork, or white fish, no oily fish, eggs, non-flavoured black coffee or black tea with no milk, a small amount of butter, margarine or oil, and salt to flavour food. Eating anything else in the 24 hours before your test may give false results. For 12 hours before your test, you should not eat or drink anything but water. For one hour before your test, you should also not smoke, chew gum or exercise. You should also aim to be awake for at least one hour before beginning your test. For example, if you plan to start your test at 9am, you should not eat or drink anything but water from 9pm the night before. You should wake up around 8am or before and in the morning you may brush your teeth and you may take any essential medications with a small amount of water but you should not eat or drink anything else. You can then start your test at 9am. Once you've finished the necessary preparation, you are ready to begin. With a C by breath test, your box will contain either a lactulose packet or a glucose packet. You need to mix this sugar with room temperature water until the sugar dissolves. And set this drink to one side, do not drink it yet. Next, fill in your symptom sheet with your name and date of birth. In the top line of the table, fill in your baseline levels of symptoms of bloating, abdominal pain and nausea. You should rank these symptoms from a scale of zero, being none at all, to 10, being the worst you've ever felt. As you take each sample during the test, make sure to update us on your symptoms so we can see how these relate to the levels of gas produced by your intestinal bacteria. If you experience any other symptoms during your test, 
please write it in the comments box below. Now take your baseline breath sample. Take one of your collection tubes from its packet and unscrew the lid. Remove your collection straw from its paper packet and insert this straw halfway into the tube. You need to blow for about three to five seconds until you see condensation form on the sides of the tube. Then secure the lid, but you do not need to screw it on too tightly. When you breathe into the tube, you do not take a deep exhale, just a normal breath will do. Once you have done that, fill in your first label with the date, your name, your date of birth, your doctor, the sample number, this one is number one, and the time that you took this first sample. Remove the label from the backing and stick it to the outside of your collection tube. Pop this tube in one of the bubble wrap pouches and keep it in your box for later. Once you have taken your first breath sample, immediately drink the sugar solution that you prepared earlier. Try and drink it as quickly as possible. Then, after exactly 15 minutes, take a second collection tube and unscrew the lid. Blow into this tube exactly the same way as before, so insert the straw halfway into the tube and blow for three to five seconds. Screw the lid on tightly, and then fill in the label the same as before, but note this one as sample two, and note the time that you completed this sample, which should be 15 minutes after the first one. Affix this label to the outside of the tube and pop this tube into the bubble wrap pouch with the first one. At this point you should also fill in the second line on the table on your symptom sheet with any updates to your symptoms. When another 15 minutes has passed, take a third tube and blow into this the same way. Fill in the label, mark it with sample 3 and the time that you finished this sample. Fill in the third row of your symptom sheet with any updates to your symptoms. Keep repeating this process every 15 minutes and make sure to label the samples correctly. This means the interpretation of the results will be correct. Once you have taken your 10th and final sample, you may resume your normal diet and activity. The test will take 2 hours and 15 minutes in total. Make sure all your completed tubes are in their bubble wrap pouches and sealed. Place these tubes back inside the test box along with your symptom sheet and place this box inside the plastic envelope and seal. Drop this parcel off at your nearest post office within two weeks so it can be delivered back to our lab. Once we have received your kit, samples will be analysed within two working days and the report sent out to you. If you have any questions at all about any aspect of the test, do not hesitate to give us a call.